With so many tooling manufacturers and vendors out there, it can be extremely difficult to make a selection of what kind of tooling brands you should be bringing into your shop. What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool, back here again for Practical Machinist. And today on Shop Talk, we're gonna be going through some tips and tricks to help make those decisions a little bit easier. But before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so as promised, today on Shop Talk, we are going to be talking tooling manufacturers and how to make some of the really difficult decisions, both financially, um, pragmatically, what's gonna work for your shop, and how to whittle those decisions down to bring in the best tools for your shop. As many of you guys know, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of tooling manufacturers out there. You know, guys who make things like end mills, or drills, or boring bars, or work holding, things that either make chips or help you make chips. There are tons of these. There are some that are pretty much, you know, the equivalent of household brands or household names in our industry. There are smaller tooling manufacturers. There are the niche and specialty ones. And then there are also the kind of fly by night ones who pop up one day and are gone the next. So it can be very overwhelming when you're looking at buying tooling to figure out the best choice for your company. I think it's pretty safe to say in my experience from what I've seen out there that choosing the wrong tool for a job can very easily turn a okay job into a complete disaster. Choosing the wrong tool for a job can make your life very, very difficult for the span of that job. That's easy enough to figure out. Choosing the wrong tool, we, we have some ways around that. But let's say we kind of know what tooling we want to bring in in terms of a three quarter inch end mill or a vibration dampening boring bar or something like that. Choosing the right one can be a little more difficult than just selecting you know, the right tool for the job. So here are a few things that I look for when I'm looking to bring tooling into my shop. Um, as you guys know, we're a fairly small shop. We have six CNC machines, a wire EDM, and some manual equipment. We do end up buying quite a bit of tooling. You know, I don't know if you guys can see this giant blue chest behind us. That's all mostly just used tooling. <laughs> that thing is full. That's not including the tooling that's on the shelf, in the machines, or we have a little box upstairs that has all our new tooling because you know you don't want to grab new tools for an old job so we kind of keep things separated off a little bit that way but even just as a small shop like this we spend quite a bit of money every year on tooling so this is something to consider whether you are a large shop buying hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of tooling every year or whether you're a small shop and just looking to buy tools that you're going to be using for a little bit hopefully these tips can kind of help a little bit so let's say that i have a job coming up that i need to buy tooling for specifically. So this may be tooling that I don't have in the shop. Maybe I need to buy some new end mills and I'm looking at bringing in something new to consider because what I'm having, what I have on the floor right now isn't working. The first thing that I look for in my experience, and this is just strictly the way I look at things. The first thing I look for is service. So the way it works for you guys who may not be in the role where you're buying tooling yet, maybe you're just a machinist on the floor and you you know, you use the tools and your request tools, but you're not the one going out and chasing these down. This is kind of how it works, at least where I am. When you're looking at buying tooling, let's put aside strictly online sales for a second. Typically, you're gonna have distributors and vendors in your area. If we're looking for a direct comparison of what a distributor or a vendor is when it comes to tooling, they're the Walmarts or the Targets. They are the retailers. And while something like Walmart or Target will have their own house brands that they push, I don't know what those brands are, but let's say they have their own house brands that they push. Sometimes these distributors and, and vendors will have their own house brands as well, but what they really act for is a storefront or a retail that you can go buy other vendors or other tooling manufacturers from them. So in your area, you'll probably have a vendor A and vendor A reps tooling company one, two, three, and then you have vendor B who reps some other tooling companies. And then depending on you know whether you're kind of at a 
less occupied manufacturing area or a manufacturing hub, you may have dozens of vendors repping hundreds of tooling brands, or you may have a couple of vendors repping a couple of tooling brands. They're basically the point of sale. That's the easiest way to think of them. Distributors, if they are good, and the big caveat here is if they are good, can be a fantastic resource for helping to make these decisions. If you do your legwork in advance and select a good vendor, it's gonna make your life so much easier as you go through this process. Because if they're a good vendor and they know what they're talking about and you trust them, they can help recommend tooling for a job or help recommend, uh, you know, I'm looking to buy a vice. Well, here are your options for that. So for instance, let's say I have a job that we're talking about right now coming up that I need to get some taps for stainless. So I'm gonna call up my, my, uh, my distributor or vendor, Dave, and say, hey Dave, listen, I gotta put this many holes in this kind of stainless at this kind of thread diameter. It's a short run job, so I don't wanna break the bank. I don't want the top of the line thing. What do you recommend? And Dave will come back to me and say, Perfect, so I would recommend this tooling brand here because you know you need something with some decent tool life, blah, blah, blah. If you want a higher level of tooling, I would probably choose this, but this one here is probably the one I would recommend. Perfect, so there I have the one I wanna try out that's you know what I asked for, which is a lower cost version. But he'll say, if you wanna try something a little nicer, try this one. A good vendor isn't gonna recommend you that, recommend you that super, super nice one if that's the one, isn't the one you need for that job. Um, much like a lot of sales jobs, I say choose a good vendor because there are guys out there who will try to sell you the, you know, Ferrari of tooling every single time when really you just need to put a couple holes in something. So choosing a good vendor that way can really, really help. If you are getting a good level of service from a tooling vendor, and I'm getting a good uh, level of service from a tooling vendor, I am far more likely to buy the brands that they are repping because I trust what they are recommending. Even if I don't know that brand or they may not be my favorite brand of tooling, I'm a lot more likely to try it out because I know this guy is shooting me straight. This is what he reps, this is what he wants me to try out. I'm at least gonna give it a shot. So that carries a lot of weight. Moving on from that, so you have your distributors and vendors, depending on where you are and how many tooling brands are in your area, the next kind of step up the ladder from them are tooling reps, or sometimes they call them brand reps. So this is the actual brand that man manufactures the tool. This is their representative for your area. Sometimes they can be, uh, they call it an applications engineer. An applications engineer from in a general term, is kind of a machinist or programmer at a tooling brand that can help you figure out tooling approaches and stuff with their tools. Very, very handy resource to have. So, the reason why these guys are so important is because tooling brand or uh, tooling vendors, while they may you know have a broad knowledge of a lot of brands that they rep, a tooling rep typically is going to only be involved with that one brand. So they have a depth of knowledge in one area, whereas a vendor probably has a broader knowledge of a lot of areas. If you understand what I'm saying, so these guys are really good when you want to say, listen, I need to bring in a milling cutter from X brand or I want to look at a milling cutter from X brand. So I'll call X brand and say, hey, can one of your reps come out? And they're going to come and be able to talk very intelligently about their brand of tooling and make some very, very good recommendations. And they kind of understand the ins and outs of that tooling in a way that a tooling rep or a, a vendor may not understand. Now, some brands actually go even beyond this and they have full applications teams. Some brands out there have the level of service that you could literally send them a print or you could send them a drawing or you could send them a physical part that you were manufacturing. You can send them your NC code and your program and say, listen, this is the part, this is how we're making it. Here's all the speeds and feeds. Here's all the tooling we're currently using. Some of these brands will take that and say, great, we're now gonna set this up in our machines because a lot of these brands have their own machine shops. We're going to test our tooling on it. We're going to show you how much money you can save. We're gonna show you the performance increases and then we're gonna give you back that program so you can just turn around and put this in your machine and do it. Sounds almost too good to be true, but companies are doing this and it is a fantastic resource, especially if you're doing something that is either very difficult, so you're trying to figure out you know, some really challenging features that you just can't quite figure out how to do on your machines or you're breaking a lot of tooling the way you're running something. 
or especially if you're doing production, this is where it really gets handy. If you have a ton of parts coming off, these guys can help recommend specialized tooling, specialized approaches to basically turn your CNC machine into a powerhouse for producing that one part. So for high production stuff, this can be really, really handy. Much like automotive brands, if you wanna look at a comparison here, everybody who works for Ford is gonna tell you how good Ford is. And then everybody who works for Honda is gonna tell you how much better Hondas are than Fords. What these application studies can help prove is it takes the opinion out of it. These guys can come to you with hard data and say, I'm not just saying that we're better than that brand. Here's what our tools can actually do. Here is your part being run with them. Because you know, when we see a lot of these tooling videos and stuff from these brands, sometimes you look at them and you're like, okay, that is a highly optimized program for that one part. That's probably not reality. Oh, how long is the tool life on that, the way you're running it? You know, we all kind of have these thoughts when we see promo videos. So this helps take some of that out of it and show, no, listen, this is your part running with these tools. And that can be really handy. It takes the, you know, personal preference out of it and boils it down to some hard data. So that can be really, really helpful. The last note I'd like to make on service is that I spent so much time speaking on this because this is far and beyond the most important thing that I personally look for when I'm considering tooling. Service really is a make or break. I don't care if the brand is amazing and their tools have fantastic life and I you know, get better productivity out of them. If every time I call them, they're gonna treat me like a burden, it's impossible to get anybody out here, um, you know, they don't seem to care about the timelines that I have or whatever. If a company does not have good service, that can negate everything else completely outside of how good their tools actually perform. So that's why service is so, so important to me. The other thing to remember guys is that really good brands, I know some of you guys say, oh, well, if I was a huge shop, I'd have tooling reps in here all the time wanting me to try out tools and that'd be fantastic. Really good brands understand that small shops turn into large shops. And they also understand that some small shops have outsized impact for how small they may seem. So they will take the time, even though you may be a two, three, five man operation, to sit down with you and help you as if you were the giant factory. So choose the reps that are gonna treat you that way. You know, no matter how big or small you are as a shop, you deserve someone who cares about your business the way you do if they're gonna be selling you all this tool. Okay, keep that in mind. The second thing that I consider when I'm looking at tooling, and this one is actually fairly far down the line from service, like if service is here, this is probably down here, and the next point is probably even below that. But that is cost. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much I love that brand X tooling, I may love a certain brand of tooling and I love the performance they do. If I have a very short run job that let's say I need a vibration dampening milling extension for, if they're trying to sell it to me for $2,000 and another brand is gonna turn around and sell it to me for $1,000, I'm at least gonna look at the brand B that's gonna sell it to me for $1,000 because I need to understand why this one is so much more expensive. If I'm doing a run where it may be two, three, five, ten 10 parts, I may not have the margin already built into there to spend $2,000 on that really high-end uh, milling extension, uh, mill vibration dampening milling extension. I should have picked an easier word to use for that. What I'm not gonna do though, is look at the $2,000 price, the $1,000 price, say no, and go to eBay and buy one for $100. No matter what guys, much like when we talk about chasing, and when customers chase you down to the bottom dollar, I'm not gonna chase tooling down to the bottom dollar because you really do in a lot of cases get what you pay for. If I'm paying $40 for a pack of 100 inserts, you can expect that if I'm paying $15 an insert, the $15 ones are probably gonna outlast all those 400 that I paid $40 for. There is a factor of cost that determines quality when it comes to tooling. That said, you do need to factor in whether you need that super high grade aerospace, shoot it to the moon tooling for the job you're doing. Much like how I'm not gonna buy a Rolls Royce to go haul firewood in instead of a pickup truck, the pickup truck's gonna do a better job because it's built for that kind of work. Now, I'm not gonna go try to race a Rolls Royce with a pickup truck because they're built for different things. You know, I have some old machines here. I have a VF3 from 1995, I have a VF4 from 1996. It doesn't make sense to put some of the really high grade aerospace tooling in there that costs a ton of money 
because the machine just doesn't have the ability to get everything out of that tooling. So that $2,000 tooling may not actually be the best choice for that job or for that machine. So the next thing I do look at is cost and then try to factor out what do I actually need versus what is the top of the line tooling that way. The third and final thing that I kind of look at when it comes to tooling, and again, service, cost, this is probably right below that, it's not that much of a jump below, is how many resources are out there to make my life easier from that tooling company. So I'm sure you guys who've been in the trade for any length of time know that back in the day we used to get big old tooling catalogs and you'd have to flip through and find the brand of M mill you wanted and then you'd have to go through and find the style. Some brands still use that as their bread and butter, believe it or not. Other brands out there have full websites where I can go on and say, I want to do this kind of application and it will recommend tooling for me. After I pick that, it will tell me how to program it. It will tell me speeds and feeds. It will tell me the radial depth of, depth of cut. It will tell me how to get the proper chip thinning. The resources out there from some brands versus other brands right now, it really is a huge spectrum where some will almost help you program the tool and others basically want you to call their reps and go through a paper catalog to figure out what tooling you want. Personally, I wanna work with a brand that has as many resources there for me as possible because yes, while you know, as machinists, we should all know how to program feeds and speeds, we should all know how to use a shoulder mill, we should all know how to program a thread mill, you know, at least basically. But if you can get more resources to help you get the most out of the tools that you're already paying money for, that's a huge thing and that can really help you learn. I mean, in a shop like mine where, you know, yeah, we have new guys coming in every so often, but we can get, kind of get stuck in a rut using a certain type of tooling a certain way. It can help you learn and say, oh, do you know what? I didn't even realize you could use a cutter like that. Or I didn't realize I should be using a shoulder mill versus a face mill for that application. It can really help you learn and essentially it kind of tacks onto that service level. So that's the third thing I look for. In any case, guys, I hope this, is how, this helps you out. Like I said, there are a lot of choices to be made when it comes to tooling, but hopefully this can help you whittle it down. In the comments below, I'd like to know some of the things you guys look for when you're selecting a brand of tooling and what to bring in your shop, and maybe some things that you avoid. Is there something you see when you're looking at tooling that you say, nope, not dealing with it? Let us know in the comments below. As always, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. You take care.